Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Down Crisis 2 for the PlayStation 1. In the last episode, I managed to rescue Dylan, but I discovered that uh, some assholes had come and sabotaged my ship and destroyed my time gate, thus stranding me uh, here in this time with no uh, for, with no uh, discernible way to return back, unless I can like somehow find a little time gate or something to a different time gate than the one I used to uh, get back to uh, my original time. Now, where exactly this gate could be, if it even exists, well, I couldn't really tell you. So our situation is pretty fucking grim. And to add insult to injury, they even, in they even just damaged my starter battery so I couldn't move my ship. So, with nothing better to do, I decided to go look for parts to at least get my ship moving. I eventually uh, went to a research facility that I couldn't get to before as Regina found a star battery there. Sorry about that, I heard a noise I had to go check out. Anyway, as I was saying, I found some memos that uh, talked about those uh, biker dude youths. And well, they kind of uh, revealed that whoever they are, they're not residents of Edward City. So, yeah, that just kind of raises even more questions than it answers regarding who they are and why the hell they're just attacking everybody they come across, it seems. Anyway, I repaired my ship, I moved to the, to the third energy facility, but a whole bunch of dinosaurs just decided to, just had, just had decided to uh, make that little uh, excursion needlessly difficult. But I killed them all, and well, here I am. And well, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started and just let Regina just stop showing off her ass. Forgot she even made that idle pose when I had this weapon. What the fuck is Dylan? He's supposed to be out. He's supposed to be out here just exhausted. And if I tried to talk to him, he would just, you know, irritably tell Regina, "Let's just go search the area as we can, okay?" Because, well, frankly. I'm pretty sure by that point, along with the dinosaurs, he's just fed up with all the shit that's been going wrong, and frankly, I can't really blame him. Anyway, I hope wherever you went, Dylan, you're off getting well-deserved rest. And you fuckers are just weak against my heavy machine gun. If I were playing this on normal difficulty, I would just be one-shotting them with this gun. Yeah, I'm really wishing that Regina... Yeah, no, fuck you! What the hell would you turn for me? You are just... You're just being my worst... You're just acting like my worst enemy right now, Regina. Yeah, I've been since I started this whole game. You've been uncooperative, you've been uncooperative, except when it really, really mattered, and it's just... Come on. Gina. We've been through we've been to hell and back in the first game. We should be buddies, you and I. Seriously though, you should have gotten out of the freaking ship and just Went to town on these assholes with your freaking machine gun, because this is just sad what I'm doing to them right now.
Are you all done yet? I think they're done. So, yeah, this facility is just underwater. I think a whole part, whole, I think just coming out of the freaking ship, you can just tell right out, right out of the gate here that a lot more of this facility is underwater. It's, it's further underwater than it should be. It shouldn't even be underwater at all. Okay, for some reason you're just you're just not aiming at them directly. Okay. Almost unimaginable situation I could find myself in, but still. So there are wooden and steel boxes forced inside. The wooden boxes have rotted and the steel boxes have rusted. They're useless. No, you can throw those things at at their freaking heads, I'm sure. You're strong enough to lift a freaking rocket rocket pod and a heavy machine gun like that. I'm sure you could chuck a box or two down those things' throats and make them choke. I think they're done again. Anyway, seriously, how many of these freaking things are are crammed inside these closed fence off areas? You can't tell me that this is a healthy ecosystem that I'm in the middle of right now. I'm probably doing this whole area a freaking favor by killing all these things. Honestly. Okay, there's no more of them here. Must have ki must have uh, killed them all. And I'm assuming the same is going to be. This, I'm assuming the same is going to be true for this as well, right? Yep. So let's just go on ahead, admire the satellite dish, and just see what's on ahead. Oh look, who are these guys? But, rather, even though I could make short work of them with my uh, heavy machine gun, I think it's about time I get some old-fashioned revenge on them for all the headaches they gave me at the military facility as uh, Regina. Plus, it gives me a good opportunity to show off how just ridiculous this weapon is.
yeah, as you can see, this weapon is kind of overkill. Not that I'm complaining, because like I said, I'm in the middle of dishing out some good old-fashioned revenge. Something underneath. You found a new dino file. The Pteranodon. Meaning winged and toothless. Length 3.0 meters and wingspan 0.6.0 meters. Observation records. They mostly feed on fish. These flying reptiles are typically found near lakesides. They hover and glide over the water searching for fish. Then with tremendous speed, they dive to snatch their prey. Although their diet consists of mainly fish, they also feed on small animals and even on mammals like us humans. Lately, the Pterandons have started to attack on humans near a facility trying to fight for their territory. Combat Notes When they are circling above you, it is very hard to shoot them, you think. Although they seem to be flying slowly, they, although, but in fact are flying fairly fast. Grammar. Before they attack their prey, they'll come, they'll come and surround you. That's when you should shoot them down. One thing you have to remember is that their skin of armor is thicker than it appears. And if you are too busy trying to shoot one down, the others will, will attack you off guard. To lessen the chance of this happening, it is important to choose an appropriate weapon. Kind of like what I got right now. I totally agree. Totally agree. Soldier's Papers. It looks like this is the end for us. After surviving all this time, and to be killed by humans. Who are they? Those people with the full-faced helmets and the rider suits. Somehow I managed to escape, but I seem to have dropped the key for this facility. How foolish of me. I can only think of one place where it might be. I must have dropped it somewhere near the spring in the jungle. You mean that little third energy facility keycard I happened to stumble by that I didn't think I could get as early as I did in the last episode? I got you covered, buddy. That spring has a, has rather a fast curtain, considering its small size. I must go there quickly or else it may drift away somewhere. The disc I was to deliver Colonel Mason has been stolen by them helmets. I believe the data was about some kind of autopsy. Clearly, our, uh, bi our biker dudes aren't really uh, keen on sharing their autopsies with other people. And I, for one, am not keen on sharing my blood and guts with these things. the suffering you've caused me. Okay, I think that's all of them. For now. Let's take care of the rest of these assholes here. I 
bet some of you are feeling inclined to feel bad for them right now, but I want to remind you, I'm doing this for the health of the ecosystem. It's much like with deer in certain regions of the world. You gotta make sure their population numbers are kept down, otherwise they'll just overrun the place and just wreak havoc on the entire ecosystem. system. It's a necessary evil, but it's got but it's a it's it's a necessary evil, but somebody's gotta do it, you know. That's how I see it anyway. Same is true of these guys. I'm sure the fish need plenty of plenty of time here to repopulate their numbers. So, uh, yeah, along with killing those uh, killing those uh, plesiosaurs, I'm doing the whole ecosystem a huge favor. I'm sure. I like you even survived one volley of rockets. It's kind of frightening to me, really. But I suppose it's a good thing that I stocked up on rockets with this thing. Okay, there's still more of you, I see. for them to do so. Idiots. Did I examine your corpse yet? Must have died in the past few days, so very recent then. Fairly recent. His midsection looks like it has been blown away. It appears that the winged beast have, had found him. No, I'm pretty sure it's our helmet, our helmet buddies. I'll just call them the helmets. I am racking up the no damage bonuses. Some of you are enjoying all the carnage I'm, I'm wreaking havoc with right now. That, that, that I'm causing with my uh, rocket launcher. Okay, I think that's actually all of them. Are you all gone? Yeah, I think they're all dead this time. How many points do I have right now? Okay, I'm actually pretty close back to where I started before I bought all these all these guns and shit. So that's pretty good. I'm like about two thirds of the way there. All right, let's use this third energy facility key card. 
Personally, I'm glad I don't. I just don't have to uh, do a pointless backtrack all the way to that spring in the jungle just to get this one key item and then come all the way back here just to be able to move forward. Hi. I love back shooting these these things. I just. It's just so cool. It's a box for putting small repair tools. You need the key to open this box. How unfortunate. Now, if you were Jill, aka the Master of Unlocking, I'm sure you could open it no problem, without a key. It's a control for operating the fuel tank. The fuel meter is reading zero. There's no need to operate it. So, explain to me how you can survive uh, two rocket. You, you can survive up to. You can survive a single rocket to the face. And yet, you can't withstand two bullets from a heavy machine gun. Unless she's like. Unless Regina's like aiming for your brains, which I think, I guess, is definitely a possibility. Then, yeah. You make no sense to me. At all. Just gonna go ahead and just kill the rest of those things before I explore this building. I think that's all of them. And I suppose it's a bit late for me to say this, but uh Plesiosaurus' necks, they can't bend like that. Whoever did the dino research for this game kind of fail to spot check on that little tidbit about their necks. Like they fail to they fail to tip it on every single freaking dinosaur and that shows up in these games to tell you the truth, but well I'm not exactly interested in nitpicking all of them at the moment. Plus I'm so out of date with a lot of my uh, dinosaur research anyway that I'm pretty sure even what's what I knew back then to be up-to-date research is undoubtedly largely outdated now, so I'd be better off just keeping my damn mouth shut anyway. Got the key for the box. Undoubtedly the box for the sh on that little ship that we just passed through. Display on the screen of the terminal is the total amount of energy generated from this facility. They probably were planning to distribute the power using the computer. Distribute it where? It's a control terminal to check the operating status of the electrical generation of this facility. It appears as though they only have one generator to support the whole facility. So we got an elevator right here. There is no response. To use this elevator, you need to operate the control terminal next to the elevator. To operate this control terminal, you need the mechanic's ID card. More key hunting. It's a control terminal to check the operating status of the electrical generation of this facility. It appears as though they only have one generator to support the whole facility. They should have a backup generator. I mean, that's, to me, just common sense. Manager's Diary, Mechanics. June 2nd, 10.30pm. 
Tomorrow afternoon, two mechanics are coming to this facility from Edward City. It's time for the annual maintenance check of the third energy reactor. This will be the ninth time. The instant something happens to the underwater reactor, that is when all lifelines will be cut off to us. Again, all we can do is pray that nothing will happen. As weird as it may sound, sometimes I feel that I'll do us all a favor if that reactor just blew up on us. June 3rd, 400, 400, 4 p.m. The mechanics who went to, to the underwater third energy reactor still have not returned. They probably became their lunch. This is a problem. One of the mechanics, Bob, has the key to the entrance of Edward City. And this is why I went to the third energy, re third energy uh, facility first, because I can't e enter Edward, Edward City just yet. To go from this facility to the city, it is critical that we get back the key. I guess there is no real choice but to get in the diving suit and go down myself. I just hope I don't become their dinner. Wouldn't it make sense to have multiple keys to enter the city? I mean, you're all, you're all kind of residents of the city, no? Why do you have only the one key? It's just phenomenally stupid. It's a control terminal to check the operating status of the electrical generation of this facility. It appears as though they only have... Okay, this is the same as the other one. Okay, what do we got here? There's something underneath. He found a new dino file. Mosasaurus. Meaning, River of Mosa Lizard. Length, 6.0 meters, and height, 0.8 meters. I think they're a lot smaller than they should be. Observation record. Their main diet seems to be the ammonites, am which live in the bottom of the waters. During breeding season, many Mosasaurus gather near the facility in search of food. The jaws, which are strong enough to crush even the hardest shells, are without a doubt a threat to us humans. Even the hardest diver suit will not stand up to a Mosasaurus's bite. <coughs> Despite their large size, they are able to swim quickly. Their mobility is extraordinary. Combat notes. First thing to do is stopping them. Shooting needles is one way, but the most effective way is to shoot Blast them with the shock wave and knock them out. Shock waving them is especially useful when there are multiple enemies. They like to hide in small places, so you should be cautious near walls where there are holes and openings. So, a key that we need to access Edward City underwater, Mosasaurus, Mosasaurus's threats that we need to uh, worry about if we're underwater, diving suits. I'm pretty sure you you all know where this is he where this is going, right? Now let's go find that mechanics ID. Hello. There's an ID card inside his shirt pocket. You got the mechanics ID card. Okay, we got your ID. There's a dead body. In his hand is a gun. The bolts have all been used up. There are many wounds which appear to have been pecked by beaks. Probably pteranodons. There is a toolbox with repair tools inside. But there isn't a tool that is of any use. Oh really? Let me take a look. I, could, I bet I could find something useful in them. There's a small boiler. It must have been built after their arrival to this world. After their arrival? How, how can you tell that? And why build a... Oh, wait. Probably to uh, probably to clean out the water. Boil the water and just take out what's... And, and then just take the evaporated water that steams up. That's, safe to, that's generally safe to drink. So, I don't know. Maybe they... Yeah, maybe they use it to uh, create drinking water. That's a possibility. I mean, you're surrounded by seawater, you might as well. Nothing to buy. Nothing to buy. Okay, let's refill my guns. Mm-hmm. 
We are golden. All right. We got the key for the box and we got the mechanics ID card. But before we mess around with this elevator, we should go for the box. Because that elevator has a pa and it can only be operated if I know the passcode for it. And unfortunately, I can't recite the passcode from memory because the password changes for each playthrough. It's completely randomized. Elevator security code. The security code for the elevator to the underwater third energy reactor has been changed. The new code is 4521. That's our code. The ocean is a wondrous and terrifying place to me. I got nothing against it personally, but I respect the the wonders both both glorious and horrifying that it contains. Especially horrifying. All right. Uh, here we are. 4 5 2 one. Scary code confirmed. You can operate the elevator. Glorious. It leads to the underwater facility. Let's operate it. Definitely, this is definitely the most, uh, Well-kept and sci-fi looking place I've seen thus far. It's an energy leak detection unit. There's probably a gigantic energy generator somewhere nearby. Although since there was a, also, although since we've come across military personnel that have been alive at least a few days ago, I guess it makes sense that this place is as well-kept as it can be. This is probably the one facility out of all the ones we've seen thus far that held out the longest. So, uh... This terminal controls the power to all the machines in this room. The power has been cut, has been shut, to the elevator and to the diving suit enclosure. Displayed on the screen is the program to restart the power. Let's re will you restart the power? There's a little memo on the other side of this room that details what exactly you need to do in order to uh, mess with these little these little blinking switches here. But I already know, so I'm just going to save us a little time and just get this started. Reactivating main power. Please check computer until power is supplied to all devices. Warning. When power is overloaded, this reactivation process will be suspended. You just simply use your stun gun on them whenever they start blinking red. And just keep at it until... Well, they stop doing this.
This is the control panel which operates the oversized elevator. You need to wear the diving suit in order to go down underwater. And we got one right here, actually. You got the diving suit. There is nothing in the enclosure. Nothing, nothing, and nothing. Mechanics note. To Bob. I heard that you were placed in charge of this area. As a present for your new position, here is a memo which may come in handy. It's about restarting the power. When you try to initialize the power restarting the program, it often stops, right? Well, it's due to the malfunctioning of the three control terminals. Here are some tips to operate it. When you initialize the program, it quickly overloads and the lamp turns red, right? Well, when that happens, all you need to do is just give it some electric shock with some kind of tool. It should wake the sucker up. Anyway, good luck. See ya. Mike. I was already way ahead of you, buddy. It's a terminal which stores the logs of the diving suit to usage. It has been more than a year since the diving suits were last used. Well, either they, well, either they didn't go down for uh, maintenance work, unless it was absolutely necessary, or the third energy reactor just doesn't need that much maintenance at all. Which I personally find hard to believe, considering all the crazy shit that third energy can do. Okay, I. Well, I'm not really gonna need to worry about all these weapons while I'm down there anyway. Regina wore the dying suit to go down to the underwater facility. we go. Hope you all like underwater levels. Me personally, Warning. I have mixed feelings Object on Object blocking elevator shaft. Emergency shutdown. I have well, mixed I have mixed feelings on them in general. There are some that I'm okay with, others not so much. It depends entirely on the game. There's a Mosasaurus. My choice of weapon, starting out, is a needle gun with an attack of 30, a speed of 70, and a range of 30. A basic underwater weapon it fires three needles simultaneously and unlimited needles. Now don't ask me how this thing generates unlimited needles. I'm just grateful that I have a I have a weapon down here that is infinite ammunition. Same with this thing. Shockwave. Attack zero, speed 40, range 50. Shoots a wave of shock, immobilizing underwater enemies temporarily. So this is basically your your uh, stunning weapon under here. Maybe it's the water effect, but it looks like as though my uh, emulator emulation settings aren't really uh, being applied as effectively water as I am on the surface. I'm noticing uh, different and stuff. Oh shit! Damn it. It's totally off the mark of my timing. It's a panel which displays the power supply to the elevator. Currently the power is being supplied normally.
suckers are worth 600 extinction points each. Shutter is dented. Something must have hit it hard. Save terminal here. We got an aqua grenade. Most powerful of underwater weapon. Fires small torpedoes, capable of destroying hard materials. I'm gonna need this in order to uh, proceed on, because there's an area that I need this weapon in order to create a pathway. So we're gonna take it. So its attack is 70, its speed is 30, and its range is 10. It's not, it's not a super fast weapon, but when it hits, it hits hard. That's all you really need to, that's all you really need to worry about. Now, as for cartridges. That should be plenty. Luckily, at least in my opinion, this underwater facility I'm under isn't too terribly big. But there is one area here that has that much like that little uh, area up in the jungle uh, yet in the last couple episodes prior. There is an infinite number of Mosasaurs that will spawn no matter how many times you uh, enter and re-exit the room and kill them. They'll always just keep coming. You can clear out every other room in the in this underwater facility eventually, and they'll stop coming. But there's one area they'll just never stop. And to me, I think that's actually a good thing in this case because they you need to have an area you need to have at least one area like this to where you can get extinction points, use your uh, most basic uh, weapons with unlimited ammunition to rack up said points, so you can get extinction points for medical supplies. Acquiring the aqua gr grenade, which you'll need to proceed through in a certain area, etc., etc. So, the devs got you covered, is what I'm trying to say. Preventive maintenance. As always, we'll conduct the preventive maintenance by assigning labor tasks. Bob will be in charge of the third energy reactor itself, Alec will be in charge of checking the water circulation system. As in previous years for the safety of the mechanics, during maintenance work, make sure to close the shutters for the, uh, up for the cooling aqueducts. Alec will unplug the plug, which allows control to shutter and keep it until Bob is done checking the reactor. The other day, there was an, there was an explosion in the underwater circulation chamber. This explosion caused a crack in one of the con concrete columns. One more explosion would have probably destroyed it. Remember to repair that as well. Remember the remember this little tidbit about the cracked column for later. It's a control terminal for operating the aqueduct shutters, which lead to the third energy generator. 
So this is basically a map of this entire underwater facility that I'm in right now. And that little red light that you see there, that's a path I need to unlock in order to get to the third energy rea reactor dir directly. I am currently in this little hallway that's right above that uh, square shaped area in the bottom left corner. So there is basically eight, about eight areas total I have to go through. Like I said, this area isn't too big. There's just a lot of, it's just a lot of the rooms themselves can be uh, pretty decently large in size and there's a lot of Mosasaur you gotta contend with. So, to operate the control panel, you need the shutter control plug. So we need to find this plug that one of these mechanics has and then take it here before we can open the aqueduct that will allow us to get to the third energy, energy reactor. There's a sign which prohibits entry. Temporary, temporary, the area is closed due to maintenance check of the third energy reactor. I wonder how many of you grammar Nazis are starting to go nuts with the broken grammar at this point. I feel your pain. I really do. So fast. My little aqua grenade can one-shot these these sons of bitches if I can get a good shot on them. Like so. Actually, never mind. That's only for normal mode. My bad. I'm just going to keep using my needle gun for now. Since it has unlimited ammunition and I want to save points or it whenever possible. Because there's still going to be some expensive items later on that I'm going to need to uh, have points for. these things I gotta kill in one room at a time before I can get sizable no damage bonuses with them. Bitches, you ruined my bonus. I work, I work for that bonus. Much like any hardworking, much like any hardworking citizen in society. I don't know why I went to black there for a sec, but. Probably go and get a few more healing items, though. At least, luckily, these things you could just kill two of these things just to get med pack L if you hadn't gotten the inner suit, and just and even then, still two just to get med pack M. So, as long as you're competent enough to kill two of them, two of them in a room, and then just go retreat back to a uh, safe terminal, you can get a med pack M to restore your health completely which is thankfully nice. Alright, we're 
we're gonna move back on through there and we're gonna see what else what else lies ahead in this facility. This is the area I was talking about where the Mosasaurs just keep coming indefinitely. So if you need to farm for, for extinction points, this is the area to do it! Shit! I didn't even hear it coming. Yeah, if there's one area in this whole freaking game that uh, closely emulates the survival horror feeling that the first game was going for, I say this underwater segment is definitely it. So fans of the first game, this is the pretty much the only spot I can say with certainty that you can that you'll ever get to getting that Dawn Crisis 1 feeling with this game. Yo boy. That was also awesome. close. There's a door here, but we're not gonna go through it just yet. Just keep your ears out. Your, your, no, sorry. Keep your ears open, and if you hear any thing odd, that probably means that one of these things is swimming right, right towards you, right at that very moment. Kind of like right, kind of like right just now, right there. They almost got me again, but I was too quick for them again. Probably not for, probably not for long, though. I want this guy to run out eventually. Surely the sun will rise. Because there's 
one thing I've demonstrated doing the Let's Plays as long as I have at this point is that sooner or later, the averages are going to kick my ass. No matter how good I was doing, no, no, no matter how good I might have been doing before. section of the column has cracked, making it weak. With a weapon with a little firepower, you'll probably be able to destroy it. This is where I need to use the aqua grenade. get offers extinction point service. The keyboard is gone. It could be that a swimming reptile destroyed it. Well, that's alright. There's another one close by that I can use. I love the size of this no damage bonus. I love it when it reaches the six digits. Actually, wait. No, five digits. Ex excuse me. I miscounted. It's a power terminal for the small elevator used for construction. Let's turn it on. Now I can use this little elevator to go, to go uh, up and down in the second floor of this room. Power the elevator is resumed. So that way, if I fall down, I can use the elevator to climb back up here if I so desire. It's a terminal which periodically records data for water temperature, water quality, and other useful data. You know, earlier I was thinking this whole, most of this place, if not all of it, probably shouldn't be underwater. But then I thought, since they have all these instrumentations to uh, measure water temperature and, and aqueducts and all this other shit, maybe this place is indeed supposed to be underwater. I guess this is one of those few things I forgot about this game. It's been well, I guess if by long you count a single year. Probably not long for most people, but whatever. On his dying suit, Moss has found their home. There are, there are tools used in underwater applications. Somebody was probably chucking the water wear and tear of the parts. At least I got the plug, so I can open the aqueducts now. Without saying at this point, but always keep your always keep your finger on that uh, shockwave button at the ready, just in case, because those things are fucking fast. Ah. 
Also, if you got them right in front of you, even though you're using a needle gun on them, it's probably better to be safe than sorry if you know that there aren't any other Mosasaur coming up right behind you or towards your side or something. Just don't take any unnecessary risks, period. I wonder if I should put another resuscitation pack in here. Eh, I think I'll be fine for now. Nothing new. Let's go ahead and save. Use this plug. Let's operate it. There we go. Machine cooling aqueducts. The shutters are open. Alright, remember remember that our door door that I didn't go through in that big area? That's where we gotta go through. Alright. Round four or five or whatever the fucking round this is, I have to get around five to get the track. I hear you. 
Sergeant. look too good. The pipe of the oxygen supply has been cut or chewed off from the back of his diving suit. We got the city key card. Now we can go to Edward City. But first things first, we gotta get the hell out of here since the large size elevator I used to get I used to get here, I can't use it. Got a new dino file. Plesiosaurus, meaning near lizard, length 17.0 meters, height 3.0 meters, observation record, our lifeline, the third energy reactor is located in the lake, underwater, half of the mechanics who go underwater for preventive maintenance never come back, they probably become bait for that giant thing. Well, if, on, if typically half the people you always send down there never come back, then you, really, you literally are just living on borrowed time. Oh, I forgot to read something. They probably became bait for that giant thing. Well, I don't know. There's plenty of Mosasaur down here. Don't, don't count them out. They are carnivorous reptiles. With their long neck, they surface the, they, they surface the head to breathe. It's been reported that they have been seen attacking the ter pteranodons from the water with their long, agile necks. I'm pretty sure they. I'm pretty sure in real life they stuck mostly to marine animals, small ones. When attacked by them, aim for their head. They try to pull their prey into the water using their long necks. When you are attacked, the best thing you can do is to fire back at them. When you encounter them in the water, unfortunately the only thing that will really hurt them is explosive artillery. You also have to be careful of the strong water current they produce when they swim. It may be wise to avoid fighting them in the water. You think? So, they tell you what only hurts them underwater. It warns you it may be best to fight to avoid fighting them underwater. To me, it's pretty obvious foreshadowing. Anyway, here we are at the reactor. Somewhat similar to the one we've seen in the first game. There it is. Warning. The third energy reactor has been damaged. The third energy reactor has been damaged. I'd be fucking terrified if I were in Regina's shoes right now. Switching to emergency. Will be locked to prevent explosions. 
I got a boss fight I gotta deal with. Ah. Well, luckily for me, I can just leave. Possible, I want to try to get a no damage bonus with this thing. Gave my word, I'm gonna stick to it. I'm just gonna kill this thing. You. The water current is presently normal. Deactivating defense mode. I don't know. I'm still in here. I wouldn't call myself normal. For water currents, I mean. In case you're wondering where it went, it just floated to the surface body. Nothing more that, of it that we need to worry about. Nothing at all. It's an elevator power panel. Let's operate it. We're getting the hell out of here. You can go to the surface. Let's operate the elevator. Land. Sweet, beautiful, dry land. Did I mention it's beautiful? Because it is.
Welcome back. How's the water? Where have you I, been? I don't recommend the diving in this resort. Hey! This is David! Is anyone there? Answer me! Over! I knew you were alive! Yo, Dylan! I found survivors here! Really? We're about to give up. Where are you? David! David! Edward City. That's not far from here. Let's go! Regina used the city's keycard and released the lock. Must hurry at Edward City. So, uh, yeah. This is the entrance to Edward City. It's a control panel for a small crane. The operation instructions are written on the panel above. But the power unit is burned and it's impossible to operate. You can't go underwater as David, in as Dylan, excuse me, in case any of you are wondering. Because apparently he's too big for the diving suit that Regina used. So, if you want to go down underwater again later on in the game, you'll have to be playing as Regina first. It must have been in repairs. The inside of the engine is exposed. Carry an entrance of Edward City. Okay, I'm going to go through the gate and go to the first safe spot that is uh, past said gate to the city before I decide to just end the episode. Before I do that, I want to s check the little save terminal here. Uh, Dylan! Get your butt back in there. I didn't, give I didn't give you permission to leave yet. There we go. We got an anti-tank rifle. Penetrates through almost anything. The recoil is so tremendous, you'll have to stop and fire. Its attack is 90, its speed is 30, and its range is 70. So, it's a pretty heavy-duty motherfucker, and we got a chain mine, a single-hand sub-weapon. Attack 60, speed 70, and range 50. Fires five mines into the ground, blasting them instantaneously, and turns the enemy on its back. We're gonna need this to proceed onward. Let's put this here. And we got some lightweight armor. Oh, wait. I don't have enough to... Oh, okay, never mind. I do have enough. I miscounted again. Anyway, uh... I'm sorry, I forgot to read that. But basically, what it does is if, if, you, if you buy it, you'll put it on instantly and it'll, and it'll cut any damage you receive by half. And, well, to me, it's a good idea to pair it with the inner suit, so that way you get reduced damage and you never have to worry about bleeding. Plus, it uh, gives... I'm sorry, what? What just got disconnected? Hmm. Hopefully nothing important. Like the microphone or something. Anyway, plus it'll give uh, Regina and uh, Dylan some pretty, uh, a pretty rad uh, new armor to wear over their outfits. Now, let's increase the cartridge for this. I don't, I think I'll only need this much for the chain line, since it's, since its use throughout most of the game is pretty limited. And as for this, though, you bet your ass I'm going to stock up on ammo for this thing. There we go. Glorious. I should probably save. 
hope to be on the safe side. Alright. Let's check out my new anti-tank rifle. And I don't think I'll need to equip this thing just yet. Beautiful. Even more beautiful when I can see it up close. Like so. I can only walk with this thing, but that's okay. That is more than okay with this specific weapon. Because I'm going to have a little fun fit. Now, let's see what we got here at the city front. Oh, hello, Blue Rockers. I hear you. These raptors fucking ridiculous. I still think so. I'm I freaking un un unloaded dozens of anti-tank rifles into them before they died. A, l a large herbivorous reptile, a triceratops, has crashed into the wall and died. It seems that someone has shot it with a poison bullet, causing its nervous system to break down. Poor thing. A steel tower for the electrical lines has fallen to the ground. Could the Triceratops have done this? Probably. Materials for repairs are stacked. It looks like it's been untouched. Maybe they thought repairing it was meaningless. Hello. We got a Dinophile. An Enos, an Eno, uh, Eno Strength Sevia. I don't think I, yeah, I don't know how to, I don't think I said that right. Length 3.7 meters, height 1.2 meters. These things aren't technically dinosaurs, number one, and they are far removed from the time when they were, when they and dinosaurs appeared on the earth, last I checked. So, how the fuck are they even here? Observation records. The cave route, which leads to the city, passes through a volcano. Two years ago, the volcano suddenly started acting up. From about that same time, the four-legged creature began appearing. They seemed to favor hot and dark places. We believed that these four-legged creatures were herbivores due to the scarcity of living organisms in their habitat. But when one of our men was attacked by one of them, we learned that they were actually omnivores. For those of you who don't know, that's omnivores are basically like what we are, we, we humans are. We eat both meat, fruit, and vegetables. Although they are slow, we have found ways to counter them. Combat record. We still have yet to find a way to fight them. We have found ways to counter them, and like, and then literally in the next page, the first sentence you say, we still have yet to find a way to fight them. Consistency, please. It's their ultra-hard armor which they wear that makes them so tough. No regular firearm will hurt them. Their jaws are also very strong. Strong enough to even crush a helmet. The only effective way we know so far is, when they attack, they stay on their hind legs. This is when you should shoot their stomach. It seems to be their weak point. Currently, a prototype weapon is in the late stages of development. This mine-like weapon, when complete, should flip them on their backs. But we don't know for sure if it will really work. 
basically that little um, mind th that mind throwing sub weapon I just got. That's what I use on those things. There's a large bite mark. It could be the bite mark of a dinosaur we've never seen yet. Okay, take you. On the truck are many empty gas cylinders. The cylinders are marked with poison marks. Probably biological weapons, if I had to guess. Now, this is an area I need to go through next, but I'm not going to do that for at least until the next episode. I'm just going to open the way first, and instead, I'm going to go this way. The Container and Materials Yard. I kind of wonder what's inside those things. Probably military artillery, if I had to guess. Hi! That was easy. I won't lie. There's something very satisfying about using an anti-tank tank rifle on that thing and just going to town on it. Just really... Just really turning the tables on these big lizards. Plus, after my failure with the plesiosaur, I think it's a good. I think this is a good note to end things on. Just massacring an allosaur. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the episode here. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of Dino Crisis 2. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you all next time. Take care.